Hello and welcome back to another episode of Hollywood Wargaming. Today we have another entry in our unit guide for bolt action. And this, of course, following up the light mortar, will be the medium mortar, one of the most common mortar variants in the game, not just in terms of which factions have access to it, but how often it sees play, as it is a very viable tool in the reinforced platoon. And it also is sold in a lot of different bundle packages, like starter armies and support groups. So if you are playing bolt action already, there is a very high chance that you have already fielded or come up against a medium mortar, and there is a couple reasons as to why they are so popular. But let's go ahead and start off by taking a look at the medium mortar stats, as it is going to be a 50 point unit when run as a regular, and will give or take 15 points if you choose to run them as inexperienced or veteran, though for most of the time I would recommend taking them as regulars, though there is an argument to be made about running them as inexperienced, as they are an indirect fire unit, who don't suffer that minus one to hit, and also do have an incredibly long threat range, which will help keep things like pin markers and small arms fire away from them, which is ideal for those more fragile, inexperienced units. However, as an indirect fire weapon, medium mortars are going to almost always have access to taking a spotter upgrade, which will cost you 10 points, but give you another model to draw line of sight from for this weapon. And a very popular strategy for most mortars is to actually hide them behind line of sight obscuring terrain, and use that spotter to draw line of sight to enemy targets, as they do have the small team special rule giving opponents a minus one to hit them, which when combined with heavy cover, makes them overall more durable than the mortar team itself. And while that spotter can fall easy prey to something like a sniper, that's not nearly as debilitating of a loss as losing your entire mortar squad, and also the activation dice that comes with it. And the big thing to note about inexperienced mortar squads is that they cannot make use of a spotter, which prevents players from exploiting the mechanics of the game in the list building stage, and simply putting an inexperienced mortar squad behind a rock while a spotter draws line of sight for them, allowing you to suffer pretty much none of the drawbacks of taking an inexperienced unit. So when you are putting a medium mortar into your list, you really have two main avenues of approach. The first of which is going to be taking a mortar as an inexperienced unit, which will only cost you 35 points. However, this will mean your squad will potentially be in harm's way, as they must draw direct line of sight to their targets, which makes you as the commander rely on that long range and positioning to ensure that they are not retaliated against. Alternatively, you can take them as what is probably the more popular and reliable route and run them at regular experience, which will cost you 50 points plus the 10 points for the spotter for a total of 60. And that is how I would personally recommend running a medium mortar, though I'm sure there is going to be at least one mad lad in the comment section down below who swears by the 35 point inexperienced unit. Who knows, we may even get a raging lunatic who blows 15 extra points for no reason and takes them as veteran, which I highly recommend you do not do. But after that, we are going to see that the medium mortar is a three-man team, which very much sits in that awkward spot where you're not getting the small team special bonus making it harder for enemies to hit you, but your wound count is still small enough where your squad can be wiped out with a single volley of bullets. And again, that is why hiding mortars and relying on spotters for line of sight is the preferred meta for most people playing mortars, as if they do come face to face with an enemy squad who has at least an LMG's worth of firepower, they will definitely be at risk. Though there is definitely something to be said about positioning both your spotter and your mortar squad in different firing lanes to capitalize on maximum overview of the board, but even in that scenario, you should be gauging which place is safer to put your mortar in and relying on that long range, while the spotter may be staring down more hotly contested areas of the board. But of course, this three-man team is going to be a fixed weapon team, meaning you can pivot on an advance order. However, on the mortar being indirect fire, rather than suffering a minus one to hit, you will instead lose your zero on whatever target you are trying to hone in on, which is really not that big of a deal because if your enemy target is moving out of your firing arc, they are shaking your zero anyways. So if you are pivoting, you are likely doing it to find a new target and starting off with that fresh zero anyways. So pretty negligible overall, but this weapon will be able to relocate on a run order. And since it is not artillery, it will move 12 inches, which is quite handy when it comes to repositioning, perhaps to find new targets, something that you will likely find yourself doing if your spotter dies. So the limited restriction in mobility is not that big of a deal here, and most matches where you are playing this unit properly, they won't have to relocate once, and instead they are going to be popping off shots and zeroing in on targets with that high explosive weapon profile. And that brings me to a point on the medium mortar that wasn't very relevant with the light mortar as it is a shorter range, more mobile weapon, 
but with weapons that are using indirect fire to engage their opponents, you really do need to commit to a target, and also really think about the who, what, where, and when of when you're engaging your enemy, as zeroing in on an enemy unit is something that takes time, and we do only have six rounds in most bolt action games, so taking pot shots at enemy units that are likely going to relocate the next turn and shake your zero is something that will likely result in your medium mortar not making its points back, though admittedly sometimes you don't have any better shots, and you will, much like the light mortar, be rolling for that Hail Mary 6 to get a hit right off the bat. And this is something we will talk about more when we get to the final portion of the video that talks about how you strategize with your medium mortar. But let's go ahead and talk about the weapon profile itself here. This mortar is going to be firing at 12 to 60 inches, with 12 inches being its minimum range, meaning you cannot fire at enemies within a foot, but your range is going to be dramatically increased from the light mortar all the way up to 60 inches. And honestly, now that I'm recording this video and thinking about that difference a lot, I gotta say, the light mortar probably should be bumped up to 36 inches, but I will spare you guys from a rant on how that would make it more viable and stay focused on the titular medium mortar, which has a firing distance of up to 5 feet, which, provided that you have line of sight, has a threat range that can reach most of the table considering that most games of bolt action are played on a 6x4 board. So when I did my previous videos on artillery pieces like howitzers and anti-tank guns, I very frequently brought up how they are prime targets for things like mortars, as even the 50-point medium mortar does have a threat range capable of prodding those backfield support units. But the medium mortar is of course going to be a single shot weapon, which is pretty standard for bolt action, and have a penetration value equivalent to its high explosive profile, because as we all know, high explosive weapons do not use velocity to penetrate enemy armor, but rather the payload of their explosive shell. So with a 2 inch high explosive weapon profile, you are going to be penetrating armor with a value of plus 2, which of course will also have you wounding regular troops on a roll of 2 plus, and veterans on a roll of 3. However, against armor, there are some hidden advantages here. The first First of which being that indirect fire weapons always hit enemy vehicles on their top armor, which confers a plus one penetration, bumping your penetration value up to three. And should that vehicle be an open top vehicle, you will also get plus one on your roll on the damage chart should you penetrate that vehicle, which greatly increases your chances of a knockout. So while I overall would not consider medium mortars as a counter to armor, it is a viable strategy even if you are just pinning them out. And in those matches where two tanks are staring across the table, exchanging shells, hoping for a hit and a pen, having your medium mortar jump into that fight and perhaps hit your enemy's top armor can actually win you that skirmish, especially if your opponent is really set on sitting still and attempting to get the best hit roll out of those dice. But with that HE 2 inch profile, you are going to be firing with a payload equivalent to that of a light howitzer. And when you consider that this weapon does cost as much as a light howitzer, it is pretty fitting. But you may be asking yourself, why take a medium mortar when you could simply take a light howitzer, who has other benefits like, say, a gun shield and also does not have to fire indirectly but can also directly target their enemies? Well, there are a few unique perks here that do make medium mortars a bit more common, and the first of which, which is a big one, is the fact that mortars come in at their own slot in a reinforced platoon, which makes them a rather inexpensive activation, and one that isn't competing with other units for a slot in your reinforced platoon, something you really can't say for most other support weapons. But much like the light howitzer, that 2 inch high explosive profile will net you 2 to 4 hits on average when drawing that template over your enemy squad. But if they are really bunched up, it is possible to get up to 5, which if your opponent is bunching his models up behind heavy cover, isn't as rare as it may sound. Combine that with high explosive weapons ignoring things like gun shield and the plus 2 to wound from penetration, and the medium mortar can be a very violent weapon, especially if your opponent is gambling and chooses not to take down orders. However, when targeting enemies within buildings, the dynamics of how to hit your enemy's unit does change a bit. You will first roll to hit as normal based on how zeroed in you are. Then, starting with the top floor of the building, you will have to roll a 4+, plus to see if the shell goes off on that floor or drops to the next below it. And provided it does go off on a floor where your enemy has units on, it will then instead roll for d6 hits instead of placing a template, which is actually a very intimidating roll to be on the receiving end of. Yes, you can whiff the roll and hit less than you would with, say, the template, but with a high roll of 5 or 6, you can really hit above this weapon's pay grade. And overall, it takes the control out of how many models you can hit out of your opponent's hands, and there's definitely something to be said about that. 
But lastly, the medium mortar is going to be applying D3 pins on each hit, meaning on average you will be scoring 2 pins on your target, and in bolt action, once a squad has about 3 pins on it, it becomes very hard for them to operate effectively, and usually they are forced to rally, which can become quite painful to do when a mortar is zeroed in on them, and has a good chance of applying those pins right back onto them the next turn. And because of that, a zeroed in mortar can make for some pretty intense top of the turn dice draws out of the order bag, where your opponent wants to get that squad out of harm's way before that mortar hits them on a roll of 2 plus once again. And once a squad has to start taking down orders in order to prevent getting vaporized by that high explosive profile, it really does become difficult for them to get out of that bind, and that zeroed in mortar can simply hammer away at them until they no longer exist, or have enough pins on them to break and run off the table. So while this weapon does operate on the tabletop a bit different than how you would use, say, a light howitzer, it still does have that very affordable, yet effective, 2 inch high explosive profile, which I find to be an incredibly underrated weapon in the game, as it can put infantry units double their points out of action, provided you set those dominoes up to ensure a hit. So overall, medium mortars are a very incredible weapon at targeting enemy units who may be dug in to a fortified position or perhaps immobile due to being an artillery piece. But if you aren't hitting your enemies and simply forcing them to relocate to shake your zero, you are getting more utility out of the medium mortar than it may feel like you actually are. With infantry units, there are many times you may be forcing them out of hard cover or a building, and at the very least, in most situations, you are going to be conferring a minus one to hit for that squad when they engage, which in a game that of course relies on hit modifiers as a core mechanic, can really dampen their overall effectiveness. Now, here's a part where I talk about a niche scenario against a certain faction where mortars do lose a little bit of their luster and overall utility, and that is going to be against the US, as they do have that national characteristic that allows them to move and fire rifles without suffering that minus one hit modifier, and a skilled US player will definitely play to that advantage and build their list with mostly riflemen and BARs who essentially suffer no repercussions by moving out of your mortar and shaking at zero, while still remaining in their cover. Still, with all that being said, you definitely still do want to score hits on your enemy, so zeroing in on a more stationary target, like say an artillery piece, is the most advisable route, and once you get an enemy squad in that lock step, where they're too pinned to activate, or are stuck taking down orders, you have pretty much shut them out of the game. So you combine that firepower with the fact that they are a very affordable activation who sit in their own uncontested slot in the reinforced platoon, and you do get one of the most commonly seen support weapons fielded in the game, one that almost every player already does have in their collection, but if you don't, it is definitely a tool you should consider adding for all the reasons mentioned throughout this video. But let me know what you guys think about the medium mortar in the comment section down below. Do you run it inexperienced, or do you run it as a regular with a spotter? And what do you personally prefer, the medium mortar or the light howitzer? Personally, I'm more of a howitzer man myself. I think mortars do make for some static and repetitive gameplay, as effective as they may be. But I do also play on a lot of tables with buildings, so maybe my opinion is a bit skewed here. As always, if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave a like. Consider subscribing to the channel and turning on notifications so you can see more entries in this bolt action unit guide. And as always, until next time, take care.